there is nowhere more desolate and bleak than Thruxton in Hampshire when the weather's like this. Not only is it raining, it's going to rain all weekend, visibility is poor, conditions are very, very tricky, and it's cold. We're here for round two of the Eastern Airways British F1 Sidecar Championship. The opener took place at Brands Hatch east of here just one week ago, and although it was bitterly cold, the sun shone. That proved to be a successful weekend for reigning world champion Tim and Tristan Reeves, who lifted the double. They pretty much dominated, fastest in qualifying, won both the races, chased all the way by determined Sean Hegarty and Callum Lawson. Andy Peach and Charlie Richardson, the number four L&W outfit, also did a great job making their season look much more promising than they finished off in 2012. Mid-pack, there were really strong tussles with Mark Edwards involved, Ricky Stevens was there, Craig Chaplow started strongly, and of course, Reigning champion Roger Lovelock with Rick Lawrence running in a new BMW had to work hard from the back, but they scored points in both races. At the end of Brands Hatch, though, it was Reeves who was dominant, coming away top of the table with a maximum 50 points. There it is, strong showing by the young brigade, though. Edwards, James, that's amazing. Ben Holland there, 24 points, so he'll be pleased with that. Andy Peach looking very strong there in third. What's going to happen here at Thruxton, I wonder? Ricky Stevens, of course, would have been much better, but he had a DNF at Brands Hatch, but still got a sixth place, so he's very happy. Tim Reeves couldn't have had a better Brands, could he? 50 points, a massive championship lead, but... Those guys are in the hunt. Andy Peach is very much in the hunt. Ben Holland's there. Hegarty, he's the man to watch. Is it all going to change here at Thruxton? It's a 2.3 mile lap. It's very long, very fast, very windy. Let's have a look and see how the Thruxton circuit is. We were lucky enough to record the onboard lap before the heavy rains came. You can see the gloomy skies off the start line then into this right hander. Very fast, sprinting up here, adverse camber before it bears left, throwing it into the complex Campbell, Cobb and Seagrave. We're at Campbell now, the right-hander, across to Cobb, the left-hander. Passenger will throw himself across here. Now comes another right, sweeping out of Seagrave away, and it keeps going right, right, right. The next one will be the left of Noble. Passengers having to work hard here, holding it down. The thing's gathering momentum. This is fourth. Fifth gear down to Goodwood, tight, tighter at Goodwood, but it keeps on going round and round and round, threatening to spit the passenger off the left-hand side at Village. Round we go, still going right, approaching the intermediate speed trap. Sixth gear along here, absolutely flat out, and then into church, round church we go. Fifth gear, sneaking sixth up Woodham Hill. Top gear, 135, 140, 145, about 150 miles an hour here before we go all the way down the gearbox, third, fourth, fifth, all the way down to second, second full of chicane. Passengers have to stay in the middle here, round the right hand of 2.3 miles passes in the blinking of an eye. It's time for our spotlight feature here from Thruxton. Uh, I want to get inside this awning as quickly as possible because I'm cold and wet. This week, however, we're focusing on a team. This is a very impressive setup. It's Team WPS Racing riding the Assured Office Solutions Yamaha. They're a young crew. In fact, I'm led to believe they're the youngest combined ages of any team in the paddock. They put a toe in the water last season and really impressed. They go very, very quickly indeed. Last time out at Brands, they had a DNF in race one, but they scored good, solid points in race two. I can tell you, this young team is very much a team of the future, and that's why we're looking at them, and that's why we're featuring them in the spotlight. I'm going to go inside in the dry and speak to the rider, Ricky Stevens, and his passenger, Ryan Charlwood. Well, inside this brightly lit awning, I can tell you, it's much better than being out there in the rain. I'm inside with the boys. I said they were the youngest combined ages. I'm absolutely right, because added together, they're a lot younger than I am. Ricky, good to see you. Ryan, good to see you as well. We've talked about your ages, and, and we've said 
all through the last couple of seasons, what this sport needs is some younger profile riders coming through. I mean, obviously, there's a great buzz in sidecar racing for you. Yeah, there is, and hopefully we want more people like us to step up from the lower ranks as well. You know, we want a young championship. We want more BSB teams to get involved, and we just want to be, you know, a bigger spectacle for everybody. So if we can kind of do our little bit and help towards that, then that's thing that we can do all we can. The professionalism of this setup, Ricky, I mean, it's a big truck. This doesn't come cheaply, any of this, and we're going to be talking later on to the guys who have helped you do it. But without this level of support, you wouldn't be on the grid. Oh, definitely not. No way. No way at all. I mean, it was a struggle at club level racing, let alone coming to a, a prestige stage as it is now. You know, And um, without our sponsors and our help, no, we wouldn't be here. We get the fun bit, we get to ride the bike, but behind the scenes, there's a hell of a lot more. And the money that gets thrown at it, I mean, it's ridiculous. But we're very grateful as a team that we can give them the results they want, and that's what we're here for. What strikes me with you two is you're, you're a team, first and foremost, but you're mates and you get on well. How important is that? Very important, Barry. Very, very important. Key to this is you've got a good relationship, you've got to understand each other. I mean, I've known Ryan for years, and I'm so lucky that he could come on board with me for this year and last year, and we've gelled so well together. It's fantastic. You know, you need that bit between us, definitely, 100%. We're going to be following you a little bit through the day and through the weekend, and hopefully you'll do well in the races because that will give me the opportunity <laughs> to, to carry this forward even more. We're going to have an onboard camera on the outfit. Now, some riders and crews are a bit funny about that. Does that phase you at all? We don't even think about it, no. Um, I think we're more nervous about starting near the front towards the Reeves and the Hegarty's and that, you know, trying to get by, so the camera's not going to bother us at all. The Assured Office Solutions Yamaha, I mean, one of just a handful of Yamahas. The chosen engine is still very much Suzuki. How do you find the Yamaha? Uh, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, I mean, we rode a bit of Suzuki last year. And then, unfortunately, we wrote that bike off, so I had to transfer to a new bike, which had Yamaha in it for me. Um, and then, for this season, we kept it with it, because we believe it's the better engine for us. Um, we're definitely getting the speed trap results. Um, so, yeah, we're well happy, and we will stay with Yamaha as long as it all keeps together. Listen, guys, you've got everything. You've got the presentation, you've got the setup, you've got the attitude, you've got the looks, if I may say so, and yeah. you've got <laughs> age on your side. So, really, there's nothing stopping you, is there? Hopefully not. Um, you know, we want to go up and up and up, and we want to try and win this championship, um, particularly towards next year. Um, so, you know, I think our focus this year is just just to keep doing what we're doing and enjoy it. That's the biggest thing. We need to enjoy it, and you know, otherwise, what's the point in us doing it all? Brilliant. We're going to wander off now and have a chat with the team manager and the man who writes the checks, or most of them. And uh, <laughs> any words for him? Um, thank you very much, Stuart and Wayne. <laughs> I'm with the two men behind the team, Wayne Stevens, Ricky's brother, and Stuart Wakeley, close friend of the family, and of course, the main sponsor. First of all, Wayne, your experience comes from having raced yourself, so that's really your motivation. Yeah, I've raced many, many years. I started off at club racing, solos originally, uh, progressed to passenger, went through the ranks, club racing, British Championship, ended up in a World Championship. Um, once I finished racing, through injury, turned my hands to, uh, I suppose, management. As I understand it, you passengered Roger Body, who's the series promoter, for a while. Yes, Roger is really my, my last ride. Uh, Roger was the person I crashed with in Schleitz in Germany, and that was really the end of my, my racing. Um, um, sidecar's always been a, a sport that I think, over the past, has looked at an older man's sport, and we need to get youth into the sport. And all what I had, I passed to my brother, I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't think Rick Ad and Ryan had it. I wouldn't waste my time and Stuart's money if I didn't think these two young kids had a potential. Um, I really do. I, I believe in them. And I wouldn't rule out a podium. I'm, I said that before we came here. I wouldn't rule out a podium. I wouldn't be surprised. Turning to Stuart for a moment. Stuart, I know you're very involved in sport because your own son is, is playing football at quite a high level. Yes, uh, Barry, he's playing at the Under-14s Academy for Portsmouth um, and he's doing well. He's had a few injuries over the last couple of years, but he's back to his best and uh, he's just been awarded a two-year contract there. So that's good for him. Here, it's I love to help out. I love the sport. I first came along with Wayne probably 10 years ago uh, and got the bug. Um, and I think Ricky and Ryan have got huge, huge potential. Well, without your help, they wouldn't be on the grid even so they wouldn't be here but Assured Office Solutions that's your company tell us a bit about that what do you do? Yeah, Assured Office Solutions I started about 12 years ago 
We do office interiors. We're a one-stop shop for office interiors. So we do office relocations, partitioning, ceilings, uh, anything to do with offices, really. Uh, and it's been very successful, hence we, we're allowed to do this sort of thing. Stuart, what impresses me watching the lads over the last meetings of last year and again this year, young they might be, but wise and sensible heads they certainly seem to have. Uh, they both surprised me immensely. From where we started last year, I think we sat at a club meeting two years ago and said, it's just not good enough, they need to be in the British Championship, so let's do something about it. So hence where we're here now. Last year, beginning of the year, was we just had so much bad luck and then it just turned and they had some great finishes. This year, he's going from strength to strength and I honestly, as Spain said, I really think he's going to be on the podium. Excellent. Well, we're going to be following them throughout the day. Hopefully they have two, two good race results over this weekend. We could do with a bit better weather, but thanks to both of you for what you've done for the boys. I say that, you know, as a TV man and as somebody who loves sidecars and you've done a great job, both of you. Yeah, oh, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Stuart as well because um, Stuart's been my sponsor since I raced. So 12 years ago, he was sponsoring me personally. Um, and without people like Stuart, you don't go racing. Simple. I can completely understand the reluctance of the teams to get out for qualifying. The weather is awful. It's cold and wet out there, loads and loads of standing water. But the fact remains, the clock's ticking and qualifying is a very important part of race weekend. Look at this lot. Finning Kat Suzuki, Team Holland haven't even got their fairing on. Come on, Lee, stop fiddling with your visor. It's qualifying time. Well, I'm tempted to say qualifying was only for the hardy, but of course everybody has to do it. They had to endure several laps of an extremely wet and miserable Thruxton. Cold, cold wind. Although it was coming from the southwest, it was bitterly cold, horizontal and wet. And of course, when the conditions are like this, most of the teams had difficulty with setup. It's extremely difficult to get the machine driving when you want it to drive. Difficult to know just how much for the passenger to move. And of course, the passengers found it hard with the wet conditions on the outfit as well. The platform is slippery, the handholds slippery, and Roger Lovelock had experimented with not just his regular passenger, Rick Lawrence, but decided to opt for stand-in passenger, Philip Sloan, as the better option. Rick Lawrence, of course, having damaged his knee. Stevens and Charles will be going well. Andy Peach, with his passenger, Charlie Richardson, had already decided that he didn't like the place, but they made the best of a bad job. Barry James and Aki Alto seemed unfazed. The times were putting in a good performance for everybody. Hegarty and Lawson pitted a couple of times to discuss tactics, and tactics would prove to be the underlying secret to success here. Steady as ever, Ben Holland and Lee Watson, second place. They got themselves a front row position. Tim and Tristan Reeves, absolutely flawless, but even he admitted to not liking the conditions. He did enough, however, to guarantee a pole position slot. Andy Peach, Charlie Richardson, second row, third fastest, in dreadful conditions. I bet you couldn't wait to get out of those leathers, could you? No, they were absolutely soaked. Probably Charlie's more than mine, but uh, I'm in the nice dry cockpit at uh, wet feet. It was dreadful, not a lot of grip. I don't know the track very well. Um, yeah, I suppose third we should be happy with. Charlie, I know you don't like this place. Is it any yeah. better in the wet? makes it easier which in turn makes it you know a bit more enjoyable to go around than, than in the drive but still don't like it you've got tim reeves and ben holland ahead of you uh what's your tactic going to be look for a gap in the middle or follow them for into the first bend I don't like following i'll just try and go <laughs> so if i can get in front i mean tim's probably unbeatable but never say never Ben and Lee qualifying all done and dusted and if i may say so a brilliant front row in dreadful conditions it was, uh, it was pretty wet out there. Uh, visibility wasn't exactly uh, that great, was it? Uh, no, we're happy with the times. Um, yeah, I mean, even our quickest lap, we made a bit of a mistake. And, yeah, hopefully we can get off the line well and go and chase Tim down. Local track for you, Ben, and you've got a good record of success here. Are you feeling comfortable, whatever the conditions? Yeah, it doesn't bother me. Wet or dry, it's all right. We seem to like the wet and go fairly well, and I love this place as well. So, yeah. I think Lee's hoping for it to be wet, aren't you? I don't mind. <laughs> well, uh, Lee, yeah. Lee, let me just talk quickly about last week. Your opening foray in brands, you know, happy with what you came away with? 
I think so. When when you look, you know, we didn't have a lot of testing over the, over the winter, and when you look where we were at the, at the start of the weekend to come, you know, to come away with a fourth and a fifth and be fourth in the championship, that's that's okay, um, and it's for us to build on it this weekend, hopefully. Front row here, then you'll be looking back over your shoulder, race long, eh? Hopefully not. Hopefully we'll just clear <laughs> off into the distance, but we'll see. <laughs> What did I say? Qualifying done and dusted. I don't see much dust. Holland and Rees front row. Stevens, great for him. Andy Peach alongside Ian Trown. Terrific performance for him alongside Hegarty. Mark Edwards, Lee Barrett, then Barry James. Going to be a battle between those two. Horsepole going well, just as he did at Brands alongside reigning champion Lovelock. Chaplow and Gilbert side by side. And the three at the back of the grid, Roger Body, Rupert Archer and Rod Robbins. The rain is still coming down and the decision's been made to call racing off for the day here on race day Saturday at Thruxton. This is part of the pit lane, so that gives you some understanding of just how bad it is. And if we swing round here and look over the Armco, this is the start-finish straight. There's standing water and there's water running right across to the grass. Hopefully we'll get a full race programme underway tomorrow. Let's hope so, eh, because we want to see some sidecars racing Go away, Rain. We've had enough. Welcome to the grid here at Thruxton for race one. We're playing catch up because we've got two races on today's program. Two eight lap dashes. We're going to move through now to the front row as these crews line up. Coming into shock, Ricky Stevens and Ryan Charlwood will line up alongside Andy Peach and Charlie Richardson. It's bitterly cold. There's a strong wind. It's dry at the moment. Hopefully it'll stay dry. On the front row, local man, Ben Holland with Lee Watson and pole position, who else? They'll be coming through. They're on their way now. It's Tim Reeves with Tristan in the chair. Eight laps, I've got to go. Mark Edwards and Lee Barrett had a problem on the warm-up lap, so they will start the race from the pit lane. But we're waiting now for the flagman to move out of the way, looking forward from the fitting cat Suzuki of Ben Holland and Lee Watson. See Tim Reeves, his outfit already pointing diagonally across the track. As Andy Peach said, he's going to go. He doesn't like following. He's going to go for the hole, but he's not got a particularly good start. Sean Hegarty and Callum Lawson got the drop on Andy Peach and went up to almost what looks like second place. There are long side Holland and Watson so a terrific start from Hegarty and Lawson from the second row third row I beg your pardon third row and now they are all oh, the chair popped up in the air Andy Peach in fourth then it's Ricky Stevens then it's Ian Drown reigning champion Lovelock the rest of the outfits filing through but already Tim Reeves with something like a five length lead a passenger's hand in the air. That was Nathan Robinson riding with Simon Gilbert, who indicated something was wrong halfway around this first lap. So early days for them to be in trouble, but in trouble they appear to be. Looking back then from Ben Holland, alongside goes Sean Hegarty, and indeed past goes Sean Hegarty with Callum Lawson showing us his uh, very slim rear end, I have to say. And uh, Callum Lawson then up into second place with Sean Hegarty, his pilot. Can Hegarty wind in Tim Reeves? Alongside me, Carol McBride, uh, herself, of course, uh, a top-class F1 passenger, now much more comfortable and dry in the commentary box. Carol, look at the side, very difficult chicane, difficult circuit for passengers. Yeah, it's quite hard around here. It's fast, you don't get a lot of rest space, and you're over the back all the time, so you're catching the wind, so you have to hang on. And high speeds, of course, speeches, speeds approaching 150 miles an hour up Woodham Hill. Yes, yeah, and into that chicane is quite so because you're obviously quick into it and then it breaks and you've got to get across, you know, in time to go through. And you'll see the passengers sitting in the middle there rather than trying to make left hander. Oh! <laughs> yeah, oh, and, he, oh, indeed. And Hegarty threw it left there. The wheel popped up. Tim Reeves then just stretching out that advantage. But he knows and he admits freely that Sean Hegarty is a force to be reckoned with. In fourth place, it's Peach. Fifth place, it's Stevens. Sixth place, it's Barry James. Seventh place now, it's Ian Drown. There, the reigning champion. Roger Lovelock with Phil Sloan in the, in the chair. And right behind him, number 73, Craig Chaplow and Case Endervelt on the very pretty pale blue outfit. Good to see Chaplow and Endervelt here this season. They almost didn't make the grid, but uh, an influx of 
Smaller sponsors towards the close season meant that they could start the 2013 campaign. There is Chaplow, there is Lovelock, Phil Sloan, normally passengers with his brother out of Hitchin in Hertfordshire. But of course, he's on with a quick guy here and a very quick motorcycle, the BMW almost threatening to gobble up the Kawasaki of Ian Drown. Simon Gilbert, Nathan Robinson in the pits. So they're not having a good indicating that something is jumping. So it looks to me, Carol, as though that misfire has come back. Yeah, it does. They had that same issue at Brands, didn't they? Which is a shame to see them back out here again, really. I hope they get that sorted for the next race. Need to get it sorted. Nothing more demoralizing and frustrating than taking four days out of your week to come to a race meeting like this on board with Sean Hegarty, Callum Lawson. Are they closing down, Tim Reeves? Well, it looks as though they might be. They've shaken off the challenge from the finning cat Suzuki of Ben Holland and Lee Watson momentarily. But Sean Hegarty riding that thing on a knife edge. He... Oh, amazing! Massive rear end slide by Ben Holland, who threw it in sideways there. He loves the place and he's riding. Carol, do you think on the edge or is he in control? No, I think Ben's in control there, isn't he? I mean, the track temperature's a little bit cold still, so only a few laps in, so the tyres maybe aren't got the heat they would do, but no, he's definitely not out of control. Everyone on Avon tyres, of course, the control tyre for the series. The Avon truck in attendance at every round in the Eastern Airways British F1 Sidecar Championship. Looking back, from the Finning Cat Suzuki of Holland. And there, the rear end of Lee Watson just obscuring the camera. Andy Peach, Oz are revving, missing gears. They're retiring, they're in pit lane. And that sounds like a transmission problem. Ben just feathering the throttle, I can hear the engine. Their race is over. Andy Peach, very, oh, it's a rear chain. It's a rear chain that's dropped off the back of the bike. Carol, that's unusual, surely. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> what causes a chain to break? I mean, it's almost constant tension. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it could be anything. I mean, the circuit around here is quite bumpy, isn't it? So, I mean, that could be a factor that comes into it. But I've not seen a train break on these meetings for a long time. Sickening to be running at the front of the race to be forced out through a mechanical problem. Sean Hegarty is definitely catching Tim and Tristan Reeves. You can see them coming closer towards us. And where Hegarty is very fast is up the long climb of Woodham Hill. And they are on that part now, riding with Hegarty, popping out of the slipstream. He's alongside. This is sixth gear, 150 miles an hour, getting all the way down to second. And if he'd gone on the inside there, he might not have made the turn and would have taken them both out. Yeah, that might have been a T-bone instant there, and I think Sean's got a bit more experience to realise not to do that. What he does know is he can run alongside Tim Reeves up that climb. The pressure is building now in the Hegarty pit. Callum Lawson's young lady on pit wall looking extremely anxious. And uh, his father in the black cap, John Lawson, waving them on, urging them on. And there Hegarty has done the fastest lap of the race, 118.935. Just confirms how much he's gobbled up Tim Reeves. And he's on him now. Hegarty smells blood. He's really got the wind in his sails, Carol. Can he do it? <laughs> yeah, I think he can, actually. And he said to me at Brands that he wasn't going to let Tim get away with it. And interestingly, both of these people have been in the circuit for a long, long time, haven't they? Interesting, yeah, good point. Nine or ten years, but somebody of their experience doesn't take them long. What, half a day they know where they're going? Yeah, once they've done practice, they'll be, they'll be back on the lines again, won't they? Here we go. Reeves and Hegarty. Hegarty Reeves, who's it going to be at the end? They're out the back. When they come in to the right-hander of church, it will be the long climb. They're at it now. Away we go up Woodham Hill. This is where we saw Hegarty alongside last time. Is he going to be able to make it? He's a little bit further forward. He's on the inside. Is he going to let the brakes off? Let it roll in? They are nip and tuck. But discretion play the better part of valor there for Hegarty. It was not worth the coming together that would have ensued if he'd gone for the inside line. Callum Lawson, his right hand deep down over the fairing, holding the bottom of the fairing. They have handholds cut in there about five inches long, inch and a half wide. You can see now Tristan Reeves reaching for that handhold. Then, of course, they have to try and get back for the left-handers. Hegarty crawling all over the back of Tim and Tristan Reeves. And this could be the lap. This could be the lap. Hegarty knows it. Hegarty senses it. Reeves knows it. He can hear the Suzuki of Hegarty behind him. We're on board with Andy Peach and Charlie Richardson. 
in a somewhat lonely third place, but it's a podium, and they've started this season very strongly indeed. The ever-consistent Andy Peach doing yet another good day's work here at Thruxton. It is fast, but it's dry. That's the main thing. That makes it harder on the passengers. He's away up the hill. Here comes Hegarty, throwing it through that right-hander. Absolutely sensational stuff. Here they come up Wooden Hill. Is this the time, then, that Hegarty dives past Reeves? No, he's not as close as he was last time. Through the chicane they go. Oh, again, the wheel just popped up. You can see the angle there. Uh, he's in pit lane. Oh, no, what a catastrophe. Sean Hegarty is retiring into pit lane. The engine's off, and he's coasting. Passenger problem. Carol, passenger problem. What do you think? Yeah, it's like it's at Callum's got arm pump there, isn't it? I think it's, uh, yeah, that's what he's saying, isn't he? My arm's pumping and can't hold on. Oh. Dear me. Yeah, and Sean, Sean indicated that he had the tap, tap, yeah. tap on the shoulder. Well, that's the only way they could communicate, but Callum Lawson, he will be distraught, angry with himself, and all the emotions that you can possibly imagine will be flooding through his head inside the crash helmet. So what does that say for the rest of the day for the Hegarty-Lawson pairing? Meanwhile, a man at the front without a care in the world Tim Reeves on his way to victory number three in the 2013 Eastern Airways British Sidecar Championship. And Wayne Stevens, our team manager for our featured crew, the boys out there, Ricky and Ryan, doing an absolutely cracking job, now elevated to third place. Carol, that is terrific. Yeah, that's fantastic, isn't it? Especially earlier, they were saying they've been you know, podiums in sight, and they're, hopefully they'll get that now. Well, what if we always talked him into it, but they've ridden well. Let's face it. Tim Reeves, uh, Brian Reeves, his father on the pit wall saying, come on, lads, you're doing well. There's two boys out there. What sort of feeling would a father be getting with his two sons riding like this? Proud, excited, and a little bit apprehensive as well, I should imagine. All the emotions flowing through the head, and none more so than team boss Robin Croft, SMT, his superbike truck parked proudly behind the uh, British superbike garages, but it's containing a sidecar. How wonderful. Ricky Stevens, Ryan Charlwood then, charging on now. Can they hold on to it? Is it going to be a podium? Riding with such maturity and such talent, this young crew. And, of course, I have to say, stamina normally comes a bit later in life. They're relatively young, but they seem to have the stamina as well. They're coming under pressure now from another young crew. Barry James is hunting them down, very much so. Of course, Ben Holland, Lee Watson out of the running. There's our race leader, Tim Reeves, and Tristan with a massive advantage now, looking to close this one off for another 25 points. And I have to say, they are a class act. There's no doubt about it. Here they are then, nice and steady. He's really relaxed. He's cooled it down now. No need to rush. They know the advantage. A quick glance over the shoulder. And the checkered flag out for Tim and Tristan Reeves. Third consecutive victory. I say in the nicest way, I don't want him to walk away with the championship. I want him to fight and have a battle through the 2013 season. Andy Peach, second place, and here's the battle. The head already going. Ricky Stevens fighting off a challenge from Barry James and Aki Alto to claim the third place on the podium. Ian Drown and Gary Horsepole with Paul Napton in the chair, just getting the better of Ian Drown. The Kawasaki of Ian Drown fast round here, and he's done himself a power of good, I can tell you. Well, Carol, what do you think? Good ride by Reevesy? Yeah, it was a good ride, and it's just a shame Hegarty went out, because I think that was shaping up to be a good last couple of laps, isn't it? But, and also, this is a shortened race, isn't it? It should have been 10 laps, we're now down to eight, so... Yeah, and he did He did actually have him nailed, I think. He had the beating of him. Yeah, yeah I think he did. I think it was definitely um, not going to get away with it, was he? Well, he's relieved. Tim Reeves and Tristan, I can tell you, relieved of that one. Fantastic victory here in race one. Wayne Stevens thrilled his boy his brother came good didn't they go well and here they are the youngsters ricky and ryan first podium at the top flight well let's take a look then that podium confirmed coming up the caption the music's in my ears tells me we've got it reeves 
Peach and Stevens. There's your podium. Barry James, he continues to impress me. Mark Edwards from Pit Lane, cracking fifth place. Gary Horsepole just got the better of Ian Drown. He'll be thrilled with six and ten points. And reigning champion Roger Lovelock, 12th place. He gets three for that one lap adrift. OK, well, I'm here with the victorious Tim and Tristan Reeves. Just literally eight laps like that. Tough round here, though, very fast. Tim, that was about as convincing as it gets, but what a battle you had mid-race. Yeah, I don't know what happened to Sean. What a shame. I was really enjoying it. He had a little bit more legs on me on that last run back, back to here, but... I just kept, I, he kept like, coming alongside me, I'm not shutting off till I'm back in front. A bit, a bit of passenger fatigue for him, but what a shame. Yeah, shame really, but you know, he's got a, he better get some more press ups, I'll can him, isn't he? Tristan, welcome to Thruxton. Got Baptism it. of fire, eh? Yeah, definitely. Once Sean had gone, I'd give Tim a little tap so he looked back to me because he knew he had a decent gap so he could back off a bit, make it a bit easier for me, like, because we know he got that second race coming, so hopefully it'll rain, it'll be a bit easier then. Well, uh, <laughs> is eight laps easy for you around here? Just for a driver, yeah, I think it's a bit of a passenger killer, isn't it? It's, it's them fast rights all the way from village right through church. It's absolutely yeah. flat out. Church is flat in top, and I wouldn't want to get on the back of it, especially with me driving it. <laughs> <laughs> First podium in the Eastern Airways British F1 Sidecar Championship for Ricky Stevens. Our featured crew this weekend couldn't be better. Definitely not. Absolutely amazing weekend. Big thanks to the team. Such a big effort from Wayne at WPS Racing, Stuart Wakeley and Eddie, who just helped us out tremendous, and we're here. One of many, Barry, I tell you. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Ryan, come through. Come through. Yeah. They're saying it's hard for passengers. Did you find that tough? Oh, the worst thing was we hadn't any dry practice all weekend, so it's kind of all going pretty slow until till then. It was like eight laps worth of real dashing, so it was it was our well, it was a bit of a shot to a system, but I'm happy we both got there. I, I thought it was fourth until coming just now. Podium! Podium, yeah, I know. I, I made up with fifth, let alone third, so I'm, I'm over the moon. Keep the champagne off your levels. We're going to move through here. Andy Peach, Andy, well done. The momentum continues. A uh, little bit difficult, Chaz. A bit of arm pump, so we backed off. We had a safe second, so that's where we stayed for, really, because uh, it's, it's an endurance on passengers yeah. around here. It really is. I tell you what, Chaz, you're not on your own because that was Hegarty's problem. Callum just came in. He couldn't do it. I oh, know. Even, even the good passengers here struggle. It's just one of them tracks. It's just a place I hate. I'm going to get away from here now. So, <laughs> second place, you've only got one more race to go, eight laps. As long as it's eight laps, I just about manage. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Congratulations. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers, Dan. Well, everybody's buzzing, including me. That was a terrific race. Could have been so different if Hegarty had just managed to nail Tim Reeves. He's definitely, definitely got the speed. That's it. We're going to take another break. See you back on the grid for race two. <laughs> back to the grid for race two it's been a long hard cold weekend here at Thruxton and none more so for the sidecar passengers they've really struggled it's tough here on passengers the story of this race is that Hegarty and Ben Holland will both start from the back of the grid due to their first race retirements but on the second row here a brilliant performance Ricky Stevens and Ryan Charlwood they're on the second row with a fantastic podium also, Barry James on the John Cable racing with Aki Alto pushing him back in line. They're on row two. Moving through to the front row, Andy Peach, Charlie Richardson. Charlie confesses to not liking it round here, so it's good for him. It's only eight laps. We're waiting for Tim Reeves to take up pole position place. There's rain in the air. Please let it stay dry for race two. Well, we've just heard in the commentary box that Callum Lawson, Hegarty's passenger, has actually left the circuit, so Hegarty clearly won't start from the back of the grid. Ben Holland, though, does have all that work to do. Broken chain in the first race, but he'll be right at the back. We're alongside Andy Peach, waiting for the lights to change. Tim Reeves to his left, scythes across the front. He had the outfit position, and Edwards, look at Edwards, up into, and Andy Peach going backwards has collided. There's been a coming together, look like Gary Horsepole. I saw the yellow crash helmet of Paul Napton in Involved in that bit of a schmozzle into the first right-hander. So did they all get away safely? Let's have a look again. This is Andy Peach. Everybody swallowing him up as they go past. There's the 32 of Horsepole. Bit of a coming together. Whether Andy went wide or Horsepole cut across the front, have no idea. But there was definitely...
definite contact. Let's hope no damage has been sustained. From the back of the grid, Ben Holland and Lee Watson, Rupert Archer there in the yellow and red distinctive, lovely, lovely coloured outfit, number 70. Race leader, Tim Reeves, again, assuming business as usual. Mark Edwards and Lee Barrett, number eight on the Kawasaki, going with him. And it's the young crew, Stevens and Charlwood, our feature crew, there in third. Carol, you watched that start. You saw the coming together. That's all behind us. We're out in front. Look at the speed of Mark Edwards. What would he have done in race one if he hadn't started from pit lane? Yeah, it's interesting. I think he might have a podium from him as well. He's done brilliantly in that first race, didn't he? Very look. fast. The Kawasaki's quick, isn't it? And he's yeah. on him, look. Yeah, and it's no mean feat around here, is it, trying to catch up? Well, again, like I say local, local for them as well. He's from down in the, the New Forest area, Ringwood area. So Mark Edwards, this is Ben Holland. Lee Watson alongside him. They're making their way through. They're side by side with Roger Lovelock, who has got Phil Sloan on the back. Phil Sloan admitted that the first race he found very hard, but they picked up a few points. That hump, there's a big hump at the back on the BMW, finding it very difficult. I can see Phil Sloan struggling to get across there. Ben Holland right with them, though, and Barry James, number 112, and Aki Alto on the John Cable racing Suzuki, very much in the hunt. Oh, no, another retirement from Simon Gilbert and Nathan Robinson. Their misery just goes on and on. But, Carol, what about this dice mid-pack? Yeah, this is fantastic, isn't this? This is the kind of race we want to be seeing, isn't it? That's Ben just getting a better of love lock there, isn't it? But I'm sure he's going to try and go back down the side again. The BMW's quick. It'll be up Woodham Hill. We're on pit lane. Which crew are we with? That's HRC, of course, from the Samsung Honda British Superbike team. But we've got a whole load of people watching the action on the monitor as well as the timing screens. Looking backwards, Barry James continues to impress me. He has really, really uh, come of age in this early, the early days of this championship. Ben Holland, though, making hay here. I won't say while the sun shines, because far from it. It's still grey, spots of rain in the air, but that's all. Mercifully, it has stayed dry. Has he got the answer ahead of him? That's looking like Ricky Stevens and Ryan Charwood. Is he going to close them in? Yeah, I think he is. He's chasing Ricky down there, and it's quite funny to see, actually, isn't it? Because Ricky used to chat a uh, passenger friend, didn't he? So some good lessons he's learned there, I think. Oh, Tim and Tristan Reeves, none closer. Lots of family connections and... and uh, a lot of camaraderie in the sidecar paddock. Everybody knows somebody who used to do it and rode with him or rode with her, and that's the way it is. A passenger gets his job by testimony. If he's a, a good rider, then a good passenger, then his reputation goes before him and he becomes a valuable commodity. Is that fair? Yeah, that's a completely true, Barry, yeah. Absolutely. Ricky Stevens, Ryan Charlwood on the WPS Racing LCR. Uh, they've got a very determined Ben Holland, Andy Peach and Charlie having a wheel arch fitted. That's obviously a result of that coming together at the start. And looks like a team driver wolf, Roger Lovelock. Nice girl. I like your colour choice, Andy. In fact, I don't actually. But uh, and green what is it? Green and blue, the devil's hue or something oh, like that. Yeah. <laughs> no, I heard that one. <laughs> <laughs> and there, Tim Reeves and Tristan on the SMT Robin Croft Suzuki LCR. And uh, Tim will be riding under Robin Croft's banner in the Isle of Man TT on the F2 as well. Now this battle, we've got a nine-wheeler at the moment. Oh, Roger Boddy and Roy Farmer watching the action over Pitbull. They've decided to call it a day. I think that pack's actually closing down on Edwards there, aren't they? I'm sure that gap's smaller. Well, I think... Be normally, because they scrap like this, they trip each other up and drop backwards. The contrary, you're absolutely right. They are closing down Mark Edwards in second place. Mark Edwards in a strong second. This nine-wheeler is going to rapidly become a 12-wheeler. Ricky Stevens and Ryan Charwood have got their mentors, if you like, behind them, albeit they're a young crew as well. Ben and Lee, number 60 on the Finning Cat Suzuki. They are chasing down the young pretenders and doing a good job and not finding it easy to get past. And in so doing, they're pulling along Barry James and Aki Alto. With Ben Holland now, with a, a very dead fly stuck on the camera. I wouldn't have thought there were too many flies around today, but obviously a bit of grime has come up from somewhere and has landed on the camera lens. Camera poised right on top of the wheel arch there. Ben Holland's going for the inside of Ricky here. No, Ricky Stevens just letting the brakes off a bit more, getting it pulled up, and you're quite right. Just out of camera shot there. There is Mark Edwards and Lee Barrett. So this pair now are closing down the second-place Kawasaki of Mark Edwards. Yep, that's definitely going to be a 12-wheeler battle, as you said earlier, isn't it? 
Well, the scrap goes on on the track. It's getting pretty hot and breathless here. We're taking a short break. They're a tough bunch, these sidecar fans. Many thousands of people, despite the inclement weather, thrilling to this one. And I tell you what, it's building into a cracking race. If you forget the fact that Tim Reeves is out in front, you've now got a four-outfit scrap for the second and third places on the podium. I say it's easy to forget that Tim Reeves is out there, but of course, he shoots himself in the foot in some respects because he's so dominant out in front. This is where the action is, and what action it is. Rick Ricky Stevens, Ryan Charwood, number 100 on that beautiful blue and white bike. Then it's Ben Holland, Lee Watson on the finning cat Suzuki right with them. In second place up front on the Kawasaki, it's Mark Edwards. This is the battle at the moment for the final podium place. Edwards has got it at the moment, but I'm not going to bet anything on Ben Holland not moving further up the field. He's right there. In fact, he's coming out of the slipstream now. Again, and look at Barry James, Aki Alto. We've got three abreast coming up to the chicane. Who's going to get it Barry James forced to take the wide line but he did the right thing there was no conflict meanwhile Holland went through I was so engrossed with the fact that Barry James went wide Ben Holland took the advantage now Carol Ben Holland is looking hard for second place and looking like he might take it <laughs> yeah he's gonna wake and make amends the race one isn't he so he's hunting down Edwards there isn't he I won't be so sure if Barry James doesn't have a go at Ricky there either Barry James going very well indeed, and Ricky knows he's got a battle on his hands because he's right within these four now. Through the rights and the lefts, the twists and the turns, and away they go again onto the back part of the circuit, round to Noble. Here we are, the left-hander of Noble, and a switch. Ben Holland has gone second. Mark Edwards now in third. Round the right-hander, they go again. Goodwood, Village, and this will bring them round to Church, to the fastest part of the circuit. Here they are at Church. Are we going to get a replay of the run up the hill? Are we placing bets on Barry James? He's so fast now. Watch him. Aki Elto, here we go. Race leader, Tim Reeves and Tristan, very much out in front. Another impeccable performance for the SMT Suzuki. And look at the gap, Carol. But look at the chasing bunch. Holland and it's Ricky Stevens up to third again. Mark Edwards relegated, going backwards from second. Fantastic action. We're getting into the closing stages of this race now. And hands in the air, hands in the air. Is that rain? Is that rain? Oh, no, we've got a red flag. A red flag on the start-finish straight. Somewhere there's been an incident. And we have a result because we've run enough laps for that to be cleared a result. And it is indeed another victory for Tim Reeves. Not for nothing is he four times world champion. As the red flag waves confirmation of that. And because the result stands at the completion of the lap before the red flag, Edwards retains second. So huge sigh of relief from him. Ricky Stevens, of course, pushed off the podium by Ben Holland. But that, as they say, is racing. Phil Sloan unfortunately parted company with Roger Lovelock on the outfit and has a broken arm. That was the reason for the stoppage. Well, we're going to grab Tris Reeves before he disappears. Tim's being interviewed by the circuit commentator. A dominant display all weekend. It is tough round here. Eight yeah. laps, that's enough, mate, isn't it? It is, mate, yeah. Luckily, we managed to get a good start again. And like me and Tim said before, like we spoke, if we could get away and get a decent bit of a gap, then I'd let him know there was a gap there and then he could back off and make it my job a bit easier so I just hope whoever it is has come out is all right because you know. oh, sure. sorry. Yeah, sorry. terrific race four four rides four wins maximum points it's all going according to plan yeah it couldn't be better really Barry could it it's uh, yeah the bike's going good and Tris is doing a good job and it's all working uh, working really well for us I hope the lad's all right he's fell out it's, it's fast there and uh, fingers crossed he's okay and I, I hope that Sean can be back for the next round strong and fit again because I love racing with Sean and we, you know, as you saw in the first race we, put, we were putting on a good show and it would have gone to the line I'm sure and uh, I know it might look easy but it's certainly not especially when you're racing him. These guys are very popular they're on home ground Ben Holland what a performance that was made up somewhat for a disappointment of a broken chain but you were flying. Uh, yeah it does kind of make up for uh, yeah, a disappointing first race uh, it was a shame we had to go off the back of the grid but you know, it made it fun and um, it was just a shame we couldn't go off the front with the rest of them and tried to keep with Tim, but you never know, it might have happened. Yeah, from the back of the grid, I mean, you were in amongst it and with them in two laps easily. Yeah, it was fantastic. I, know, I knew as soon as we'd uh, sort of caught sight of, of Ricky, really, um, I thought, right, here we go, Ben's going to have his head down now. 
um, and I didn't know who was in front of him to be honest so that's, yeah it was, it was fantastic Ben rode brilliantly and yeah thoroughly enjoyable shame shame it got cut short a word about Ricky Stevens young guy I mean he was flying wasn't he oh and he oh. just uh, <laughs> 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 yeah. no, Rick's amazing um, obviously he used to be my passenger years ago and um, yeah it's great to have him up on the grid here and yeah, I'm, I'm really proud of him and how he's going it's a shame he went back a lap and he wasn't on the podium sharing it with us really Lee Barrett one of the strongest passengers out there did <laughs> well, you don't feel it at the Lee, did you find that tough because the pace was fierce wasn't very, it very very tough very it's unbelievably tough round here and by that lap, I was sort of pleased it was getting stopped, really. Yeah, I mean, it um, doesn't matter how experienced you are on a good passenger, everybody hates it when it gets really tough like that. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's just around the, around the back, the speed, it just wants to take you off the back of the bike all of the time, and you just, you're just fighting against it all the time. There's nowhere else like it. Well, now the man who gives you a hard time, and Mark, I mean, he's, <laughs> he's on the handlebars. You love this place. I mean, I've seen you go well here before, but that was a phenomenal race. Well done. Yeah, it's my home circuit, um, and I do love the place. I just love the speed. Um, it's got some good technical bits, like I say, it's my home circuit, so I, do, you know, I know it well. Yeah, well, the Kawasaki too, I mean, up the back drag, it looked quicker than anything else out there. Well, that's nice to know. And, um, the speed traps earlier on, um, we were you know, pretty quick. Um, yeah, I'd followed Tim for a few laps, he pulled me along, and um, yeah, you know, nice, nice way to come second, but I'd like to finish the race in second, but there we go, you need luck. Luck might have deserted Edwards in previous years, but not so. 53 points in this season. Reeves then massive up on top. Andy Peach riding very well, looking good for him this year. Barry James, I'm mightily impressed. Hegarty, well, he'll be there at Donington with a bit to do, clearly. But Ian Drown, 11th on 24, he'll be thrilled. There's a distinct smell of champagne around here. This whole podium area has been sprayed all weekend. But what a finale to the Eastern Airways British F1 Sidecar Championship Round 2 here at Thruxton. Brilliant racing. Yes, Tim Reeves is dominant, but he might not be dominant all season. We want some action. We want people to get stuck into Tim Reeves and claw that advantage back. The chance comes next up at Donington. We're there with World Superbikes on the big international stage everybody's pumped up for that one not least of all me join us please thanks for watching bye bye